joined us today at church. I know that God's got something uh, planned for us. So I uh, always have been praying that you would have your mind and heart open to hear his voice and what he has for you today. Uh, we've been in a series called Exodus uh, to exit to the next it. And so uh, we are going to continue that. This is uh, week four of that. Uh, but before we kind of dive in, as you've already heard, high school has come back from camp and uh, you'll see a photo, our group photo up on the screen. Uh, the thing is about that photo, there's a lot of things that represents uh, that photo. One is a lot of vitamin D hit our bodies. Uh, we were out there, some became a lobster, you know, all that kind of stuff. Some got really nice and tan. Uh, funny thing is we went to a beach camp and really didn't go to the beach. Uh, due to our wonderful tropical storm that was in the Gulf, uh, it was double red uh, flags, and uh, it's actually against the law to get in the water. They can actually take you to jail. Uh, and so a couple funny things was, we were trying to run some wreck close up to the water, not in the water, but just close to it, and we had four wheelers drive in and everything and kicking us out, and so, uh, they take it very serious uh, with all that, but uh, we did go to the pool that had a lazy river, or a wave pool, and uh, basketball, and volleyball, and all that kind of stuff, so we definitely still got plenty of sun. But also what that uh, picture really represents is a group of students who actually got to connect with God. Uh, and got to hear his voice. Some of them, for the very first time, literally heard him speak to them. And so, uh, some crazy things. We, uh, this camp, um, we had to do all the food. We had to cook all the food. So, uh, I grabbed my Blackstone and brought it to camp, even though uh, at camp our, our room had its own grill but we are from Texas, our stuff's better, so we're bringing our own stuff, right? Uh, and uh, me and Daniel and Pastor Lalo uh, uh, every day uh, prepped and cooked uh, pancakes and sausage and eggs and uh, tacos and street corn and everything on that Blackstone and tons and tons of food. Daniel actually wrote it all down so he could tell stories, so it's great. Uh, but. Uh, it was just a great time of feeding the kids to come into our room and get to talk to them a little bit as we hand them food. Uh, but uh, it was a great week of them really truly understanding who God is and who God is inside of them. And our guest speaker, uh, he doesn't do a whole lot of uh, funny stories and fluff. He's really like a uh, steak and potato kind of pastor, preacher. He really much just brings it. And so we had to digest that and kind of in small groups kind of break that down uh, to help understand it even more. And so they were definitely challenged in God's word and in their life. And so it was an incredible time. Uh, and I know I have a lot of people say, hey, how was your vacation? Uh, I always sign them up next week, next year for camp. And then they could tell you how a vacation was with 100 students. So, uh, but it is always no matter what kind of uh, trial or obstacle or pain, whatever, the joy way outweighs anything that goes on at camp and seeing these students do some incredible things. So with that, we're going to kind of dive in uh, to week four of uh, the book of Exodus. We're going to be talking about a story. If you have been in church at any part of your life, you've probably heard this story, this event that happened. It is with the Israelite people crossing through the body of water, the Red Sea, and the pharaohs coming and chasing after them. Uh, so we're going to kind of dive into that story and just kind of see all the things. A lot of times I feel like when we read God's word, we just read it sometimes and we miss some little things that I think God can do some powerful things through that. And so we're going to dive into this event and really kind of seek him out and what he has for us today. But before we kind of dive into the scriptures, I want to kind of preference everything. One, the Israelite people have been in slavery for over 400 years. Uh, they, the Egyptians have basically just been running their lives and uh, making them do a bunch of stuff. With all that, uh, Pharaoh, 
Uh, you read in the scriptures a lot that Pharaoh, that God was hardening Pharaoh's heart on a, uh, multiple occasions. But just to let you know, if you want to write this down, uh, Pharaoh actually hardened his own heart before you read scriptures that God did it. And that is in Exodus chapter 8, verses 15, and Exodus 8, verses 32, where Pharaoh's actually hardened his own heart before God actually starts doing that. And so just to kind of realize that Pharaoh isn't that great of a guy. Uh, he's got people in slavery, torturing them, all that stuff. So he's really uh, trying to keep people where they need to be and him being in control of everything. So with that, we're going to kind of see what God does with his people and how he can interact with them and take them through uh, what God has for them. Now, with that, it kind of brings me to our point number one, which is to exit to next it. It will, we will face obstacles. We will face obstacles. And so in life, we have obstacles all the time. I don't know about you, but we have small ones and big ones. Uh, after I got home yesterday at 3 a.m. from camp, uh, I got a little bit of a nap, woke up, and realized my septic tank stopped working. Obstacles, people, obstacles. Kind of like, I would like a toilet, right? shower, all that kind of stuff. Laundry. Do you know how much laundry there is in camp and you have to bring it all home and do it and then you don't, you're not able to do it. And so lots of obstacles. And I was thinking as I was reading the scriptures is a lot of times when problems are facing as the septic was facing with me, first thing is I'm going to try to figure it out, right? I'm going to try to figure out how to fix it. So we get things working. I'm out there. I'm taking the things off. I'm looking at it. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but let's figure it out. Right. What I want you to hear is we're always trying to fix things. And a lot of times we don't first ask God, how would he fix it? Because really, does God really want to worry about a septic tank? Is that what he's really worried about? Because is, is, that's how I feel. God doesn't need to worry about my septic tank. I'll fix it, right? I can handle this. But God wants to be in every detail of our life. Everything that we do, he wants to be a part of that even a septic tank problem. And so instead of me trying to always figure it out and fix it, I want us to truly try to challenge ourselves to understand is let's dive into God's word or let's do some prayer time. How can you give me the resources and the, and the things that I need to accomplish this obstacle and, and fix this obstacle that is in front of me? So I know that we all have obstacles and we got to figure out how to get through them. The Israelite people had an obstacle in themselves, which is a big body of water. And Pharaoh was about to come and uh, come get him because he realized, hey, that was stupid to let those people go. Who's going to do all the work now? So he kind of chases him down and let's get him, uh, let's get these people back. And so we see this in Exodus chapter 14, uh, verses 10. Uh, it will be up on the screen. This is what it says. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than the corpse in the wilderness. And I want you to kind of just see that for a moment. One, man. We sure are whiners, are we not? These people, think about it, they just got, they just got done seeing 10 miraculous plagues that set them free from 400 years of slavery. The next moment they have an obstacle in front of them, they don't go, well, God's got this. They go, why did we do this? And they start whining about why did Moses bring us out here? Why has God wanted us? It's better to be a slave than to be in this moment. And I feel like we, we're, we're no different than that. When obstacles come in our way, we're like, God, why, why am I in this situation now? Why am I going through this problem? You know, but we forgot about how he fixed all the other problems in the past, Right? We easily forget all the things that God has been doing because we only are going to live in this moment. 
and we're gonna sit here and we're gonna whine about it because we want, you know, why, why is God making me go through all these kind of things? And so I want you to see as these Israelites have seen God's movement and even seeing that and they face this problem, they still are having a hard time seeing how is God gonna get me through this obstacle? And I hope you hear me. I know that some of you have said those same words. How is God gonna get me through this? How is this really gonna happen? I want you to know that God is in control. He is sovereign and he knows the path and the plan. He knows everything. All we got to do is listen. Which brings me to point number two is this. To exit the next, we will understand that God supplies what we need. That God's going to supply what we need. And we see this. He talks, Moses is talking to him, talking to God. And God tells him, hey, this is what I want you to do. We see this in verse, uh, verse 16 of chapter 14 it says this. It says, pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. Now, like I said, we read a lot of scripture and sometimes we just read over things and this scripture is very powerful. One, God tells him, hey, pick up that stick, raise your hand and watch. Now, I don't know about you, that probably wouldn't have been my first go-to when Pharaoh and all his armies are about to chase me down. And I got this body of water. My first thing is like, how do we escape? What's the escape route? How do I move this mass of people and communicate? We got to move to the left, right? We got to go somewhere because we got some major problems. He goes to God and says, look what we got here. What's going on? And God says, hey, that piece of stick that I gave you seems like a good, good thing to do. Just crazy to grab a staff and raise your hand and watch the waters part. And not only that, well, the waters part. I don't, we always read, I think I've read over this many, many times. The waters part and you're going to walk on what? Dry, key word here, dry land. I don't know how many oceans you've been in or lakes you've been in and you got your feet on the ground. Was it dry? Was it squishy, right? Probably had a little bit of mud right, right there. And I'm just thinking when the water's gone, how much mud is there? And how to get across all that? But God not only splits the water, he dries up all the moisture out of the ground and they literally are just walking on concrete. I mean, just think about that people. We should just be like, oh my gosh, we serve that God. Do you hear that? We serve a God that can do some incredible things and supply so much to us and he will just use the most simplest thing, just like a stick, to do some incredible things so that we will be in what? All of him and not ourselves. Because when an obstacle comes our way, we want to first take, on, take it on and figure it all out, but God's going to make it to where we have to just lean on him and figure it out. And he's going to give us a simple way of doing it because there's no way we would have came up with that. So who gets all the glory? He does and not us. There's no way Moses and the Israelite people could have got them out of this. It was only God that was going to get them out. Of it. And once again, he was going to show his people, I'm in control. Just pick up the stick, raise your hand and surrender and I will part the water and you will walk on dry land. And so Moses does that. They start walking on dry land, but here's a verse, here's some verses that I didn't put up on the screen but I'd like for you to kind of uh, see this. Uh, it kind of it gives a little bit more detail in the story. It's verse 19 uh, and 20. It says this, then the angel of God who had been leading the people of Israel moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. The cloud settled between the Egyptians and the Israelite camps. As darkness fell, the cloud turned to fire, lighting up the night. But the Egyptians and the Israelites did not approach each other all night. Now, I don't know about you, but you probably have watched the movies, right? You've watched the movie, Ten Commandments, all that stuff. But I never remember that scene being in darkness. Because it'd probably be a bad shoot, right? It wouldn't be very easy to shoot it, right? But it's dark outside. 
And I feel like that's a key because you know why? They had to truly rely on God because they couldn't see where they were going. And only the angel of the Lord that was a pillar in front of them moved to the back and I'm sorry, there's an angel of the Lord, a pillar of cloud leading us to where we're going. And we're still whining and complaining about what's going on here, right? And then it moves to the back, separates us from Pharaoh, right? And then it turns from a cloud to a pillar of fire so it can light up our path because God's light's the only thing that will direct us. And when that is lit up, we can actually walk on that dry land. And so here they go, they're walking, they have a pillar of fire leading them and they're, they're being chased by Pharaoh. But I want you to see this, this is in point number three, to exit to Nexit, that we will see God's power. We will see God's power. And the Israel people, once again, are gonna see how powerful God really is by just using simple things. No matter what obstacle you go through, God's power can truly overcome. And we see this in starting in verse 26. And it says this, when all the Israelites had reached the other side, the Lord said to Moses, raise your hand over the sea again. Then the waters will rush back and cover the Egyptians and their chariots and charioteers. So as the sun began to rise, Moses raised his hand over the sea and the water rushed back into, into uh, its usual place. The Egyptians uh, tried to escape, but the Lord swept them into the sea. Then the waters returned and covered all the chariots and the charioteers, the entire army of Pharaoh, all of all the Egyptians who had chased the Israelites into the sea, not a single one survived. God eliminated the enemy that has been holding them as slaves for hundreds and hundreds of years with one simple gesture, a stick over water. And in that gesture took away the thing that they have been fearing all their life. Even to the point where in chapter 15, they wrote a song and started singing it. But what I want us to see is that no matter what obstacle we go through, God wants to use the simple things, one, so that we know that it's not because of us, it's only because of him, but also so that you can see how great his power is. We serve a God that has all the power, has all the resources, has everything he needs to help you through any obstacle that you may go through. The only thing that you need to do is raise your hands and surrender and know that God's got it all under control. Thank you, Light. I appreciate that. And I couldn't imagine the Israelite people seeing this and the jaw dropping moments when not only once did the water part, but then they get to the other side because they're still seeing their enemy coming after them, right? The enemy's still coming and for the water to come back and take care of everything that they need. And I want you to know that God has you in his hands. And he wants to walk with you in every little aspect, big obstacle, small obstacle. But the most important that you need to know is God is in control of all of it. Even though it may seem chaotic and you may, have, you may think there's no way we're getting out of this, God always has a plan and God always has a path. And so as this crashing waters come upon the Israelites, uh, high school camp, we didn't have, you know, that kind of a moment where we were crossing waters, but we did finally on the last night go to the beach and uh, that evening and uh, could hear the waves. Uh, it was a beautiful night. We had the waves and uh, it was a full moon and all that kind of stuff. Well, instead of me just kind of telling you, I just want you to see uh, as our little bit of our time of prayer, uh, what it kind of looked like on that evening. Go ahead and check your attention to the screen.
That is there as you're seeing students on their knees praying and asking God to show up. Talk to me, tell me something, right? And what you don't realize, uh, before we got into that moment, I was telling them that uh, we were all facing the water and this beauty that God created, but right behind us was basically a rave party at a restaurant, had a band, everything going on. And I told them that the world is always going to try to entice you. We can't ever get away from it. The world is always going to be there. They're going to be loud, enticing. They're going to look good. They're going to sound good. They're always going to want to draw you away from the beauty that God has created. And this right here is going to fade away. The rave party is going to end, but God's waves are never going to end. That power is always going to come and crash down. So you have to make a choice. You can run to the rave, you can run to the life of the world, or you can say yes to God's beauty and power and always be facing that. And so I told them that if they've never accepted Jesus, this is what I want you to do during your prayer time. With everything you've got, I want you to yell the word yes. Or if you've already accepted him, I want you to say yes again. And I want you to cry it out. I want you to say it. Now, I know most of you probably have never been a part of something like that, but you stand there in the quietness because in this moment, just to let you know, the rave party ended and it got quiet and all you heard was waves. And then, everyone, and then all of a sudden you started hearing, yes. Yes again. And you started hearing students crying out, and lives being changed. And there's nothing greater than hearing that, those words. But my question to you is, have you had your yes moment? Are you so consumed with the world and the rave parties of your life that you can't see the beauty and the power that God has, has sustained day in and day out? Have you had your yes moment? Because we shouldn't be leaving this room without saying yes to who Jesus truly is. Because when you say yes to him, he's going to take simple things, but do very powerful things with it. And we are looking for a generation, a group of people, a church, because the whole theme of camp was revival. We're waiting, wanting people to step up and say yes to him so that we can bring revival to where we live but it all starts with someone in this room just saying, yes. Is that you? Will you say yes to Jesus? Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we just come before you. Thank you for all the things you do in our lives. That we can even have a moment like this where we can actually open up your word and talk about you and how you deal with your people, your creation, even though we whine all the time. We always think there's no way out of whatever obstacles that we may face, whether it be small or big. But Lord, you always have the way out. You always know the path. You always know the tools, the resources, the wisdom we need to make it. So Lord, I just pray that we would just simplify our lives in a sense of just leaning on you, knowing that you have everything under control and that you are sovereign. So Lord, I pray for people in this room that they would just say yes to you. There's no greater thing that, that they ever could do than that because it is life changing. And when lives are changed, cities get changed, states, countries, and revival, true revival breaks out. So Lord, may we not only just be individuals, but may we be a church that says yes to you. Lead us. And no matter what obstacle we face, we already know all we gotta do is raise our hands and you will part the sea. Lord, we love you. We are honored to be in your presence. Thank you for being who you are. May we always lean on you. We give this to you in Christ's name. Amen. Join us.